see if anybody's out here. <laughs> and it says Laura is here. Good morning, Laura. How's everybody? How's Shell doing? I'm okay. I was I thought I had my secondary camera set up and apparently I don't. So I'm oh. <laughs> oh, well, you need to take some time. Go ahead. So um for those of you who are viewing this at a later date, this is a live show with Shell C and Vic Robinson. And we videotape each Thursday, uh, 1030 Central Standard Time. And uh, we hope you can join us live one of these times. Join in the chat. And even if you're just lurking, you know, give us the thumbs up so that we know that you've been here and enjoyed the content that we're providing for you. So, yes. Rennie's here. Hi, Rennie. So we've got a couple in the crowd anyway. Barb's here. Uh, let's see. Carla's here. People are starting to join in. Yay. Yay. Hello. Hello. So, you know, today's topic is a broad topic. And, and Shell and I were talking about this. You know, when, when we originally pick topics, um, we don't really have anything specific in mind when we get going on it. We just pick a topic that maybe there might be some interest in. And so, you know, when you think about um, art and culture and all of the things, it's a very broad topic. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when you look at things like the Parthenon and the uh, all, of, all of the art, the artisans that have had their clay vessels that were buried with them, you know, it's just, it, there, it encompasses just about everything in life, you know, because as artists, we adorn things and um, that's part of what we do. <laughs> I know I adorn myself with jewelry and other things that I've made. Um, we adorn our walls with the art that we have made and that's all part of culture. Um, we have murals, you know, when you go down the street and you look at uh, the sides of buildings and the cultural murals that you're looking at, um, those also are art and culture and um, it affects our daily lives. So we have more people joining in. We've got Daisy. Hi, Daisy. And um. I just, I just want to say, you can take this any way you want to today. Um, but if, if you are, you know, in the group on Facebook, be sure and post something and use, you know, the hashtag or something from today, so that we know that you were influenced by what we're doing here today. Now. I'm not sure what Shell's going to work on today. I've got an idea about what I want to do. Shell, do you want to tell them what you're up to? Yeah, well, the way the way that I look at art and culture is that artists can influence by culture, but also culture is influenced by art. If we go back through time and we look at things, you can definitely tell that the things that were surrounding the artist is what influenced them. But also, if you look at something like the surrealistic Cyril movement, <laughs> how did that affect? That was such a big change from the very realistic art that was coming out about religion and, you know, all the iconic, iconic things. And then the surrealist came along and said, well, you know, you really interpret life. Life does not interpret you. You interpret life. And it, it made such a big change. And when it, and I think of art as a communication form, really. Yeah. So what I'm going to do today, I saw Dina Wakely making a book yesterday, and I want to make her book. It, mine's not going to be exactly the same, but I want to make a book like that using the the uh, system that she used. <clears throat> and so I was thinking about books and how what a big revolution it was when people started to be able to manufacture books quickly. And that's an art form too, making books. So, certainly, you is. know, we have a loose topic, and I'm just going to interpret it that way. Certainly is loose, and you know, can be a lot of fun when you think about it. Can be a lot of fun. Um, so I'm going to start out. I've got 
this stencil from Stencil Girl. Uh, this is a, one of my favorite people because she makes such cool stuff. This is a Gwen LaFleur stencil. Uh, trying to get a number for you guys in case you're interested. It's L630, Gwen LaFleur. And she has all kinds of great stencils out there. But um, what I'm going to do, you may be wondering <laughs> from the looks of what's going on here, mm -hmm. is I'm going to do a, an art journal page because, you know, I've been influenced by the culture, the current culture of doing art journals. And so I'm definitely uh, using my art journal more for um, tracking things within art. Um, you know, I take an art journal with me when I go places, go on vacation, you know, wherever. So my art journal has become an integral part of what I do part of my culture and what I did was I stenciled these fish from that stencil and then uh, I actually reduced them down on a copy machine to get different sizes of fish <laughs> so now I have multiple fish and I took a um, what do they call this stuff this is a masking tape here and I cut a fish out of the masking tape. And I'm masking off an area in the center of my page. And I'm also adding these fishes over the top. And, you know, it, uh, one of the things that I learned early on when uh, I first started stamping and all of that was the whole part of, you know, do the stuff that you want in the foreground first. You know, so I put my mask down. Now I'm layering things on top of that because as I lift my mask, that's going to appear in the foreground. So I'm just gluing these pieces down with some uh, matte gel. And let's see what the crowd's saying. Hi, Peggy. Glad to see you this morning. Hi, Cindy. Good to see you guys. So I'm going to dry, dry that a little bit. And you notice uh, on this page, <laughs> I have my odd numbers again. So you guys might wonder what I'm doing. <laughs> because it just looks like a big giant mess. And it kind of is. But um, I'm making pages for my book. And <clears throat> what Dina did was she was using, of course, her own products and Ranger products. Uh, none of which I have, but she wanted, she made it the book out of, um, what is it called? Mat, mat board or something that they sell in range at Ranger. It's apparently canvas on one side and cardboard on the other. And they made a chunky book. And I thought that that was kind of cool. So I decided to make a chunky book also. So I took packaging uh, from Stencil Girl. These, these are envelopes that stencils come in. And I cut them down. And you can make this book any size you want. I'm, I'm doing this uh, free class called Sketchbook Re Revival, which I'm not really sure what it's going to be, but it starts at the end of March. And you're supposed to make a junk journal. And so I'm kind of making a junk journal, but I'm not using ephemera. I'm using these cardboard pieces that I cut from envelopes. <clears throat> and this is a tab binding, so I'm going to be using um, Dini used sticky back canvas, I'm going to be using these paper, I mean these fabric tapes for my binding. <clears throat> and then I have this huge stack <clears throat> of tissue paper, printed tissue paper. 
that I believe Fran sent me, I think, a while ago. And I'm just going to use some of that and some gesso to put just, you know, get a start to these pages. You know, I don't like to use white pages. They bother me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just slapping some of this colorful tissue paper on these pages as I go. And uh, I mean, what el what else am I going to do? You know, and some know. of it's almost kind of like wrapping paper. But it's colorful, and so it'll be fun as a starting place on my pages. It will be. And I, like she said, I think that is a free course. Uh, we will try and get a link for you for that. Yeah, I believe it is free. You just join the group. And I think it starts on the 23rd of March or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know what it's going to be. Sketchbook? I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, it, it it probably is sketching. I mean, there's a a lot of sketchbook stuff that um, we can have that's applicable to what we do. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be some other stuff considering who some of the artists are that are participating. Yeah, we won't all be sketching. I don't think. So I'm using some translucent. Uh, if you if you look at your good tubes of paint, they usually show on the front how transparent something is. Like the the first color I put down this morning is this teal, and it is not as transparent as the Viridian or the Cerulean. Um, but what I want are those uh, darker fishes to be like they are in the water. You know, where the further away they are, the harder it is to see. So that's why I'm knocking them back with color. Oh, this one's fun. <laughs> but I still want to, I still want to be able to see them. I just don't want them to be the prominent part of the page. So, I'm going to get a baby wipe and wipe some of that back a little bit. So, instead of getting out a matte medium or something, I'm attaching these with gesso. And they're not coming out perfectly by any means, but I'm kind of spreading them and also kind of muting some of the bright colors as I go uh, by applying the gesso under and over the top. Gesso can be, a, you know, a gluing medium as well. The very first people that I saw doing mixed media ages ago were actually using gesso as as their form of glue. Yep. I don't see many people doing that anymore. But I used to see it all the time. It's also sealing the cardboard, of course, which is my main purpose because cardboard is absorbent and annoying. <laughs> to do this book, you have to have an even number of pages. It cannot be odd, but you can have as many as you want. I'm also making a ginormous mess. That's why I put this wipeable thing underneath. <laughs> I want to say hello to the people that are joining us. We've got Nancy and Vicki and Marie and uh, welcome. Just want to yeah, make sure that everybody, you know, we recognize all of the people that have come to join us today. So um, I'm just blending out colors here. I've got the cerulean blue. I'm going to put that down towards the bottom more so. Get rid of some of that greenish. That was uh, what was that? That was a uh, green gold. Green gold. I love that one. <laughs> yeah, it's one of my faves. So I need to I need to clean my brush though. I think got a lot of green gold left in there. Wow. 
So, and I need to dry. Hi, Judy. Hi, Leslie. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it might be dry enough. Let me see. If I had more energy, I would say that we should make more live streams because so many people are stuck at home including myself uh, the entire town has shut down around me <laughs> yeah i mean the only things open are grocery stores and um hospitals and stuff like that yeah so i know i'm and i know i'm not the only person in that situation you guys are probably bored and are going to get more and more bored as time goes on I'm sure because I'm bored and it's only been like three days strangely my my youngest son works as a baker at a bakery yeah and there isn't any any seating inside the bakery where you can sit down and eat yeah so it's more like a store and so they're not closed well, because there's a lot of places are open for takeout and I will say support those places. You know, they're, these businesses are struggling. Um, the employees, you know, they need to work. <laughs> they need the money. You know, oh, yeah, all kinds. And, and check with your local community. Like if there's people who are struggling financially because of this, um, usually there's a community bank someplace that they can contact to get some help with rent and uh, you know all of those services that you know your utilities that kind of thing because um, everybody's going to be in a bad bind I mean I, I look at Barb and the people out there on the west coast you know they, they we're talking about having those uh, earthquakes now on top yeah. of everything else it's like holy cow what else can go you know what else can go yeah, my my middle son is over there. <laughs> yeah, and his his girlfriend who he lives with works at a hotel. And I thought that the first place that would close would be a hotel, but that's not the case. So she's out there working at a hotel. Yeah, I contacted him because I thought he might might be needing you know some assistance. Yeah, because they they're living on the edge, being a student and. The person who works at a hotel. So, well, and the the kids are home. You know, they're all they're all struggling with things. Um, I did post on my regular Facebook page some uh, doodle pages, and I should put them in the group too, um, because there are people that are doing things, you know, to entertain children. Yeah. Um, Man, I'm so glad my kids aren't school age. Yeah. You've probably seen that meme of uh, the person sitting in the computer uh, doing the computer work, and it says first first day working at home, and then the three little boys are tied up with tape over their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that's, that's hard. I, my daughter is working from home, and she has three kids. But I think her children are pretty good at entertaining themselves. So I don't. And my boys drive me absolutely bonkers. If they were, you know, yeah, preteen, teen type age, I'm glad they're grown up. They can definitely entertain themselves. Yeah. <laughs> not that they all live away, because that's not true. The one living in the house with us, but. He's really helpful with uh, taking care of all the other situations we have. So, yeah. Well, 
there are a lot of artists online that are doing their bit. Um, and I think, uh, I think Seth after is doing a daily one on his page. I know you said you watched, uh, Dina Wakely yesterday. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else is doing addition. I mean, just it's check awesome. them out. guys. There's lots of entertainment out there. They're doing yeah. their best to keep us going here. There's virtual museum tours and um, live streams of penguins 24 hours a day. Yeah. <laughs> what I kinds put of one up from Zoo Atlanta the other day because um, I like watching the panda bears. So. We can stop. It's, it's fun to see. Even though you can't go to the zoo, you can still see what's going on in the cages. Yeah, I thought that was so cute. They, they, they took the, I don't know what zoo it was, but they took the penguins out since the zoo was closed. They took them out for a walk to go yeah. visit other animals. Did you see oh, that one? No, that's cute. That is so cute. Trying to line this thing like a up. Walk about the zoo. That would be cool. Yeah, I thought it was really cute. I may not need to make as many pages as I've got here because this is going to take too long. So I'm just placing, placing the stencil back on here. I, I think what I want is a. You guys know what a bluegill is? <laughs> I think I want something like a bluegill. When I was a kid, we used to go to Minnesota fishing all the time. And bluegills and sunfish were happy little fish that, you know, you could, when I was a kid, I'd just lean over the edge of the boat and look down in the clear water. And you could see them swimming. And they'd be in schools and they were just having a high old time. And what I want to do, what I, what my cultural thing is here with the fishes, and you've probably been wondering, is, um, and what we're doing to our oceans, and what we're, we're leaving, or possibly. In my page, it's cultural in the fact that I am doing art which has a purpose or meaning that. Um, is beyond just making a pretty page. Yeah, my, my cultural contribution to this art is that I am using recycled materials. There you go. Because I feel all very bad having all the trees kept down so that I can have a substrate to put my art on. <laughs> yep. I don't like that. So I think this book will be great with these recycled things from Stencil Girl. I guess I'm done for the last three here. So I'm going to switch up my color palette now because I'm not doing the water part anymore. And I'm going to grab, I've got some paints here from Dina Wakeley that I need to use up anyway. Well, there you go. So I'm going to start with this uh, lemon yellow. Lemon yellow. Because we want sunny, bright, happy fish. Oh, and yeah, let me show you. I printed off. Do you guys need oh, inspiration? What I did was I went in and put in uh, a search for bluegill, and I printed off from the page a picture of a bluegill, so I've got some kind of reference photo here. And let's see what kind of brush I want to use. I don't want anything as big as, let's see, 
flatten around here. People are talking about, uh, they're giving recommendations for streams and things you can watch. Good. A lot of stuff coming up on Facebook. Surprisingly, Facebook is being useful for once. Yeah, I, I'm really pleased with how people have uh, jumped in there and shared yeah. what's going on in their lives. Hmm, how about some orange and black? Sure, why not? Why not? Oh, well, I got these. So I'm looking at the uh, yellow on the reference here. That's where I'm starting from anyway. Okay, maybe that wasn't exactly straight, but that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> I saw some. Right? Other... What's that? I don't know. Don't ask me. Thanks, Daisy. Uh... Oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for the black belt. So, yeah, somebody's in the chat talking about Patty Parrish. And one of the things that she and Robin McClendon and that whole group is doing is very cultural. They're using uh, a lot of Asian caricatures and, you know, hieroglyphics and that sort of thing. Um, actually, let me show you. I was printing off some stuff the other day. Uh, Because I, I kind of got interested in some of that. And you can go online, of course, and look at all of these different alphabets. Um, and you can print them out. You know, so, I mean, you can use some of these um, historic caricatures in your art. Um, you know, and they have mirrors. So it's it's kind of fun to look at all of these different symbols and how they've been used. And then um, what they're doing is scripting, and they're just using um, ink and brushes and pens and doing scripting. And it doesn't have any words or meaning. I mean, you can you can do it with real words. You know, you can use the, the characters to write real words, or you can just, you know, do something that doesn't really have a meaning. It's just, you know, it's it's beautiful. I I enjoy looking at those characters. Character, I can't even say it. Characters, because there's beauty in the form. Yeah, this paint is definitely over the hill. I will have to do something about that. I've got some new yellow. I've got some. Ooh, I should get that out. I've got this new yellow from Diane Reevely that is like fluorescent yellow, I'll tell you. Um, And some of her new containers. Did you get her new paint? Um, I got one. <laughs> I got some of the old ones because they hadn't been opened. And they were uh -huh. half price. And, um, you know, if I use it for a year and I have to pitch the rest, it's okay. It was half price, right? Yeah. Um, but I intend to do some... 
with these because I went to that craft show. So 50. Well, these little bottles that are half the size are selling for three bucks. Right. So, you know, two fifty, three bucks. I, I went for the big one because they were still available. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know that this is going to solve all of our problems either. It's just a, a chance to try something different. But you can see this is more of a fluorescent yellow. Oh, wow. It's this one is much more orangey yellow. And this is a much more fluid paint than um, Dina Wakely likes to use heavy body paint. Mm -hmm. Me too. I think I really, well, it just depends on the application. I really like the fluid paint. I'm just saying, I like them all. I like, I like craft paint. <laughs> I like uh, heavy body paint. Fluid really depends on the application. Yeah. So, but when it's over the hill, like this yellow is, it's over the hill. This is taking too long. You're making a huge mess. Ah, that's all part of it. My hands are like, blah. Okay. All right. That's such a thin application. It should dry quickly. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm not that fussy about. Well, I guess I am too. <laughs> I have my favorite paints. You know, I really I really love my good quality paints, like my golden. However, when I'm working in a journal, I'm not going to be fussing around. About the quality of the paint. I, I will use anything I've got on hand. Yeah, I think most of these. Most of these tubes of heavy body. Have just gotten too. Too dried out. You can see them clumping here. So. May have to do something different. Um, but I want to add, want to add some of those orangey tones in here. Kind of fish, kind of has these. Orangey tones. Man, I have a lot of crazy tissue paper. I like crazy tissue paper. So what have you guys been working on? They've been trapped at home. You've been making art. You've been cleaning your space. I know I've been sanitizing everything in the house. I'll go around and do doors and drawer pulls and <laughs> everything that there is.
<laughs> Hi, Andrea. Well, remember we had a time change. We had a time change. Same time. It's just that we had the time change. Well, you had a time change. Not yeah, me. I had a time change. <laughs> Central Standard had a time change. Oh, my coffee is cold. I'm going to drink it anyway, though, because I'm thirsty. My tea is on my little warmer thing. <laughs> I need to get one of those. I haven't even opened this one up yet. Well, we've got at least something on most of one side of these. I guess I could print out the rest later. I don't know how much time I've been spending. Probably too much. I didn't realize this was going to be quite as big a project as it is. Yeah, I... I understand, Leslie. Um, my problem is I have people from the outside coming in. And when you have people from the outside coming in. And you have to sanitize. I go uh, do doors and knobs and <laughs> all kinds of things that I wouldn't normally think of wiping down on a regular basis. We have a unique situation. You have a very immunocompromised person in yeah. your household. So do I. Um, try not to let other people in. But my son's my son went to the grocery store and then, you know, for us. And then I had to go and think about: Did he wash his hands? What do I need to clean? Uh -huh. I'm trying not to be too crazy, but. I got a 90 year old and 80 year old and I'm a you know, compromised person in my house. Yeah, well, it doesn't take that long for me to take a, a disinfectant wipe and hit those surfaces that people touch regularly, you know. Not that big a deal. Yep, and I have bleach, diluted bleach in a bottle, in a yeah. spray bottle. In a rag, and I just go and spritz. I was doing it more when my youngest son had been uh, working with someone who just came back from China. Aha! Uh -huh. But they and they ended up not having it. So That was a few weeks ago when it first started. Yeah. A little nerve-wracking. Yeah, that would be. And he stayed well, and, and the, the odd thing about this is the incubation period. It's like yeah. death-long incubation period. Good grief. But we've been through it before, right? So we'll manage again. Orange. Cindy Edder here, she hates orange. Putting orange on. Yeah, I'm putting orange on. Well, you know, I'm sorry. Blue, you got to have orange, right? Well, it's just kind of the way it is, yeah. in my lexicon. It's too big of a piece. It's not going down smooth. Such a huge mess.
So you're covering all of the chipboard? Well, not all of it. I'm just trying to get some gesso and some maybe some colors on some of the pages. So I've got this tissue paper. I'm just gessoing it down. Because, you know, it doesn't make good pages if it's not sealed. Oh, it's Lord, so I'm so sorry. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're all, I figure we're all going to know somebody that's infected eventually. Oh, what a mess. Oh, well. Anyway, I better just start working on the actual book. I wonder what I did with that. I had a big jar of... Hmm. Let's see what this silver looks like. Oh, it's still fluid. Yay. All right. I'll use some of that. <laughs> Some things are still working. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to clean this up right now. It'll take too much time. And my hands, my hands are a disaster. Lori, um, I am working on a journal page and uh, Shell is working on a book. Yes. Mostly kind of because I just wanted to try the, the, the binding system and I haven't even gotten to that yet. I'm trying to, trying to adjust the pages real quickly, but oh well. I'll work on it later. Okay. So I'm interested to see this binding system. I did not catch the live, so well, it's fairly simple. It's just a process and it looks yeah. like it's gonna be easy. Um you stack them all on top of each other in the order you want them. Some of these didn't get just on the other side, so I'll have to do that later. Doesn't mat matter to me what order they're in, but in some cases it would, you know, yeah. if yeah. you were trying to do something specific. Yep. Since this is just going to be for me to work in, it doesn't. It's absolutely irrelevant what order it's in. And she attributed this. Well, this, since we uh, don't really know what they're going to ask of us for that class. Right. But they had someone showing how to make a junk journal with your camera. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure what that has to do with the sketchbook part sketching? of it. What does yeah. sketching have to do with I don't know. Anyway. That was interesting, I thought. Not sure. And that was a true junk journal, not a fake junk journal. It was literally made out of junk. So yeah. Or, you know, ephemera. Yep. I did watch that. Yeah, I watched it too, although I've seen that done a million times. I just yeah. I was yeah. trying to figure out what they wanted. Right. Because I'm I'm very happy to work in a junk journal. That's that's cool. That's what I want to do. I'd rather yep. have that than a boring old, you know, something else. White pay all white pages. Yep. This one didn't get just so wanted either. I think. Well. It is what it is, and I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> I don't even know the well. pages. Because I can't remember how big they said to make it. So, if well, this one I, there again, I think that's at your discretion. You know, everybody works at a different size. 
Yeah. But how many pages did they say? 30 pages? or I don't remember. I don't remember either. But I mean, if it's a month long thing, you would think. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I thought it would be fun to do these long skinny pages. We will try and get that. The link. Yeah. Link. That was. Where did I see that? Let me see if I can find well, it. Well, Mary Beth Shaw posted one. Yeah. Because she's got a, a lesson in it, I guess. We can post it later in the group. I think everybody who's in here is in the group. So, Okay, so how many did I end up with? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, that's an even number. You have to have an even number. Or else it doesn't work, apparently. And you stack them up. Let's see if I can remember now. <laughs> and I'm going to do the five tab, not the three tab. She talked about five tabs. She did three tabs. So she had like short, fat tabs made out of... Uh, Sticky back canvas for my injure, which she'd sprayed. She was using her um, new gloss sprays and her distress crowns. You know, of course, she's going to use the products that she sells. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? Okay, so if you guys want to join this thing, it's called Sketchbook Revival. And it's there's a private Facebook group, and you guys can go join that Facebook group. Yeah. And it hasn't started yet. I think it's the 23rd or something like that of March. But there's been people posting the books that they've made. And there's been people uh, posting art in there. I don't know. So what, what I picked out to use for my tab binding is these. These are fabric washi tape. So she used sticky back canvas, which she sprayed and poured some of her junk on. I'm going to use fabric tape, which has sticky on it. But I also have my brand new bottle of tacky glue in case it's not sticky enough. I'm not sure if it will or won't be. And you stack them in the order. Let's see if I can make it fit on here. And then I'm going to I'm I'm going to do three tabs. Hopefully, I can do well. Get these things. Three tabs to start with, and my hands are covered, absolutely covered with gesso. Leslie, so, it's, just the, it's just the Sketchbook Revival Facebook group, if anybody's interested in joining that. I should wash my hands, but we're live. Can't really wash your hands if you're live. <laughs> it's going to be very hard to get the sticky off these things, the backs off these things with my gesso hands. I cut different colors because, you know, I like to be colorful. Absolutely. And this will end up being much more colorful than it is now, of course. Oh, come on. This is going to be the bummer is going to have to, is picking me, picking the backs off these. So it seems pretty sticky, so I guess I'm just going to go with it. So then the next thing you do is you put that one there so that you've opened it like a book. And then this one is going to have two tabs. So you can do this with two and one, two and one, which is what she did. And hers were fatter because she made them out of sticky back canvas so she cut them whatever size she wants since these are only like probably a half an inch or three quarter of an inch i decided to do the five but it's the same process okay got it unstuck huh yay so then the two tabs on this one are going to go like you know if you were real fussy you could measure but they're basically just going to go in between I wish my hands were not covered with gesso. Come on. So 
So the cool thing about this this binding is that when it's done, it it opens flat. And so many bindings that we do when we make books do not open flat. That is so true. That's why I wanted to try it. So then, and then now I've got three and two, and I'm going to flip this one, line it up on top of that one as good as I can, you know, completely the way it's supposed to be. And then I'm going to fold these tabs, the three tabs, over. So one, two, three. And then I'm going to move on to this one. So now I folded three, so I'm going to add three. Oh, come on. These are so hard to peel when you've got just all over your hands. <laughs> yeah. So one. Maybe I should try to use my thingy to get them open. Sometimes this helps. And since they're fabric, they're kind of weird. You could also, I mean, you could use glue and make your tabs out of something else, even strips of fabric or gel printed fabric. She did She did think it was a good idea to make them out of fabric because it's more sturdy, but you could use duct tape. Duct tape would actually work really well because it's yeah. very sturdy. If you had some pretty duct tape, you know, yep. printed. All right, that didn't, that didn't peel correctly. I don't know if that's going to be a problem. Like I got I got it started and then it peeled just part of the thing. Mm. Like split the backing. Oh my gosh. Yep, this one's going to do it too. Let's not do yellow. Let's do some other color. Tape peeling is the bane of my existence. I hate it. Yeah. All right. So one, two. I also don't know how many tabs it takes because I haven't counted. It would depend on how many pages you had, but I don't know if I've cut enough of them. Three. Okay. So now I'm going to open this book like this. Put it down, line it up, and then as good as I can, and then I'm going to fold the two back because I had three last time, so now it's two. Those three are still open, and then I'm going to add two tabs to this one and just keep going like that, back and forth, back and forth. So let's see how fast I can do it so that we can see what it looks like. And then maybe I'll actually work on one of the pages. Come on. Unstick yourself, you beast. So then it's one, two. Turn this one over, line it up as best you can, and then tab these three. And then you have the next page, which since you've just stuck three, now you've got to put three on again. Is this making sense? <laughs> Am I making sense? No. Do I ever make sense? <laughs> Peg says you need a pointy tool. Yes. I, well, I was just trying to use my X-Acto knife, which does help. Thanks, Leslie. I guess I could get something else. One. I don't know. You know, there's a lot of... I'm... I took a class last year from a, a sketchbook school site. I don't think it was the same one. Um, there's also that sketchbook project. 
where you get the sketchbook and you sketch in it and then send it back to this library. I've done that one. I mean, there's a lot of sketchbook things you can do if you're into that whole sketchbook sketching thing. Yeah, and it's good practice. Tabs. I like to use I like to use it for ideas. Like if you know, suppose you're going to carve some stamps or something, and you've got some ideas. It's it's kind of fun to sketch out some of those ideas before you actually go into the carving part. I I have a feeling, and I don't know if this is going to be true or not, but that this class is going to be more like a journaling class. They're calling it sketchbook, but I don't really think it's going to be much about sketchbooks. I could be wrong, but just from what people have been posting, plus the fact that they had people making a junk journal at the beginning. Yeah, that confused me. Mm -hmm. He did. really did. I don't, I don't get that part because sketchbooks, sketchbook paper is usually quite different from a junk journal. Yeah. And I don't hear anybody talking about that. I don't know. Have they done this before? Have they done this whole thing? Yeah, before? some of those people that are posting the art in there, they did it last year. Okay. So maybe you just need to go back and look at some of that past stuff from the year a year ago. Yeah. See what direction that's going because I haven't a clue. Me neither, but I think it's going to be fun, whatever it is. It's well, it's hard papers, and it's free. It's free and it's fun, right? You get to meet yeah. other people, other artists, and see what their style is and what they're doing. So, yeah, that was a pretty straight. I hope this fabric tape will keep this keep this in good shape. <laughs> so I just tabbed. Folded three tabs, so now I have to add three tabs. So when you fold two tabs, you add two tabs. When you fold three tabs, you add three tabs. And it just becomes kind of mindless. Maybe I didn't need to make these as long as I did. They could have been shorter, I guess. I made them two inches long because I didn't know. Come on. Well, it's your prototype. You've never done that one before. Nope. I haven't. And we like to fly by the seat of our pants here, in case you haven't noticed that. <laughs> that absolutely true. Oh. I mean, this probably wasn't the best project to do huh. on the live stream, but I thought it was really cool, and I wanted to try it, and I also need a book. So. Right. For all those reasons, it's what I felt like doing today. And you guys might want to make a book too. Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I think I need a different color here. I decided a while ago that... Art journaling is different than making art journals. Yes. They're two different arts. <laughs> I agree. Totally. You might just want to spend all your time making books and never finish the pages. Well, and I know some people that are like that. They enjoy making the books. Yeah. So this thing has completely separated. I enjoy buying a book and putting my stuff in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're just two different things. It's like, yeah. 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 I definitely love, love a finished book. Like once it's finished, it's just so awesome. I just look at it. It's like, oh, wow, it's finished. Mm -hmm. But actually getting one finished is like a freaking miracle around here. <laughs> well, I just I take them three so years to finish different it. ones. You know, it's it depends on what I want. You know, the paper and surface and all that. It kind of depends on what I want to use. I want to add some more blue to this, but that blue is such a bright blue. Let's see what this looks like. 
Let me see. Oh, that's kind of nice. It's kind of nice. I think I want some blue on this bluegill. All right, so I folded three, so that means I have to add three. I'm not paying very good attention, so hopefully I'm not messing this up. <laughs> I don't think I am, but I don't think you are. But it's possible I did something completely crazy because I wasn't paying very close attention. Yeah. We'll find out. A little blue on his bill. Probably needs some on his. I'm going to need more tabs. Dang it. Tail and fins. I wish I didn't need more. Whoops, that's two. Yeah, that's better. So I'm going to stick down two, add two, my last two. It occurred to me that this is probably pretty boring to watch. <laughs> well, well, you know, I I'm I will admit I don't watch a lot of the live shows. Or I, I do watch them, but you know, a lot of times I'll pop in and pop out. Yeah. There's so much stuff going on that you can't watch everything from everybody. All right, so then I added three, I mean, I added two, so I need to tab three. And I'm going to need 15 more, maybe? I don't know. I guess I have to cut some more. 15 more? Maybe. Whoops. I can hear people downstairs talking real loud. I hope it doesn't come through on the live. I don't hear anybody. Well, that's good. It's very loud to me, but it's probably like microphones are not picking it up, I guess. Okay, I wanted to write a quote on here. Just not sure where I want to put it. What I want to say is. We live in a culture where people are more offended by swear words and middle fingers than they are by famine, warfare, and the destruction of our environment. That is true. Have you seen those videos of uh, Venice canals and how clean they are and how no. dolphins are swimming around the canals? Oh, awesome. Because everyone's quarantined. Ah. So all the boats and all the pollution and everything aren't happening. 
because people nobody have found out. Run the dolphins in the canals. Wow. So that tells you something. Yeah. Well, and I was really sad. You know, when I was down in Florida, we went in search of the manatees. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first experience searching for a manatee was to find a dead one. Oh. Um, you know, so that just tore at my heart because, you know, the manatees are something that just are not everywhere in the world and are only going to be in that particular cultural environment there. I did see them though. So that was fun because the, they go into the backwaters. Um, you know, they've got a lot of the, canals that uh, go right up to the backs of people's houses where they have docks and stuff. But, you know, there you again, you got motorboats with big engines that are going through those canals and that's where those manatees are trying to live. They are beautiful creatures, Leslie. Okay, so this is the last one, so it doesn't actually need any tabs because it's just going to be stuck down by the ones that are already there. So I think I've bound the whole thing. And it looks kind of interesting on the edge. And then when you open it, it folds completely flat. Cool, yeah? Looks like I screwed up there because it should be. Maybe I didn't. Maybe that's. Oh, no, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Don't even see any there. Okay, this may not be perfect. I may have screwed something up. But anyway, you get the idea of the binding. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I could have done a neater job, but. That would require me actually paying attention to what I was doing. I'm not sure why there wasn't any on that middle one. Okay, that one obviously wouldn't have one, but. Were those two pages stuck together or something? It feels like there should be something there. I'm going to put them on. Because <laughs> I'm afraid it's going to fall apart if I don't. I'm not sure what happened there. But I got a couple more tabs already here, so I'll just stick them on here just in case. Just in case I did something wrong, which I'm pretty sure I did. But you guys get the idea, right? It was an easy binding. I've seen I've seen some of those kind of bindings where they're flipping from both sides, you know? Yeah. And and they're using fabric and uh, those are pretty cool books. Yeah. This one doesn't flip from both sides. And see, it's not connected there, so I'm not really sure. I, I messed something up, but I don't know exactly what. Anyway, it'll work. It's not connected there. So I don't know what I did. But anyway, <laughs> I think it'll work regardless. And you could put a cover over the whole thing so that you didn't see the binding, or you could just leave it like this and make the first page the cover. So, what time is it? 8.30, 9.30. We have about a half an hour? Yeah. All right, I might just start working on this page then. Leslie says yeah. she loves that they are flat, and I do too. Yes, it's awesome that it's flat like this. 
And you can work in twos or ones. I didn't get them all gessoed, so I'm going to have to go back through and gesso some of them and put something on some of them. But anyway, I can work on this one if I want to. Where's my paint? There's some paint. This has predominantly red in it, so I think it's going to be a red and blue sort of a page. So I can go through and add some of this ruby paint. Just to start with. I'm going to make brown. <laughs> I think maybe he's talking on the phone. Sometimes when people talk on the phone, they're really loud. It's like, do they think someone on the other end can't hear them or something? Hmm. I don't get it. Well, yeah, I think sometimes they do think that. They, they raise or they elevate the level of the conversation. I keep telling them, hold the phone closer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you don't need to yell at the other person at the, on the other line. All right, what do we get? We got some kind of sponges here somewhere in this world. Get a stencil out, sure, why not? I guess working at home means yelling on the phone to people. Who knew? <laughs> yeah. Who knew? Well, that's kind of cool. That's really more of a mask than a stencil. You know the other one I want is this one. I should probably take them off, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use it like this. Oh. sponge somewhere in this location. I guess I have this kind of sponge. Maybe not exactly what I wanted, but it will do. Pouncy, pounce, pounce, pounce.
Yeah, the rain all over has been crazy. And my heart goes out to anybody that's been having to deal with earthquakes, illness, uh, <laughs> storm issues, whatever is going on in your life. We had rain all day yesterday in Arizona, which is weird. Don't know why. It just felt like it, I guess. I guess. <laughs> That's not doing anything. Maybe I'll go for the blue. Yeah, I'm, just I'm just using a Faber Castell pit pen now to do a little bit of shadowing. Um, I added my quote here. We live in a culture where people are more offended by swear words and middle fingers than they are by famine, warfare, and the destruction of our environment. That's from unknown. And then up here it says, provide a healthy place to live. And whether that's in our oceans or in your home, you know, so that people don't catch this late, latest contagion, whatever. That's the culture of where my art is taking me today. Do you hear that strange sound, Shell? Okay. Kind of a super tiny back feet or something. Okay, so I'm shadowing under my little bluegill here. I also want to add some shading to round him out a bit. Ugh, gross hands. Gross, gross, gross. Right, Mika? It's gross. <laughs> Mika down there keeping guard for you today? Yeah, she's guarding my toes. Okay. I don't think the the background fish is showing up very much on the video, but they are there. Trust me, they are there. Yeah, I don't really see them very much. I think you covered them up. Well, they're there. I mean, mm -hmm. you can see them. I can see them, but you have to, you know, it just doesn't show up in the video because of all the layers. Uh-huh. That's the thing about video. The resolution is lo much lower. Yeah, so the pictures are going to be different Yeah. than what you see on video. It just yeah, it's always is different. There is ultra high definition video, but we couldn't afford it. <laughs> I personally don't have a video camera in my a person here can't videoing me with a real camera. Well, it says it says it's taping at 1080, but I don't believe it. Yeah, I don't believe it either. Maybe that's what I need to do is take a photograph. Mm -hmm. 
and yeah oh yeah yeah if i do a photo you're gonna you're gonna see the background fish for sure fishies so i'm just gonna pop that over on the facebook group Sharing. Okay, so I, I popped a photo in the group so you guys can see it a little bit better. See what's going on with the process. Cool. Need one more of those. Should I have one more little piece of that? It's always hard to add yellow later because that is such a translucent color. Yep, I do not want to ever work. I almost have to put white underneath it and then put it on. Yeah. I'm going to add a few greens in here. Because I do see a few greens in the photograph. If you look at this is the photo I was looking at of the fish and you do see some green coloration in there down his beak A lot of green around the eye area. A little on the back fin there. That's like a good shell. Oh, thanks. Very abstract, but I'm about to make it not abstract because I that's just who I am. <laughs> Although I like abstract. I, just I love it. abstract. I don't know. I think that's one but of my favorites. I just feel like it needs something right here, and I'm not sure what, so. Yeah. I find something to put there, and then it will make it not abstract anymore. Maybe. I don't know. How much time is left? Uh, not much. I mean, you know, we don't have to go right up to the hour. Oh, but we do. We okay, promise. now they're talking about lactate. <laughs> they're talking about lactate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone's having a bad tummy, I guess. 
that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, they're not going to run out of milk for their coffee. Um, I don't know. They're, they're limiting everything here. So I don't know if we'll run out of anything. I mean, they're, they're, we've already had empty shelves. As they've come back and filled them up again. You know, I'm, I'm not too concerned. I just may have to make more trips when they get things in. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Maybe I don't want to add something. Maybe I just want to dry it and do some kind of work. No, oh, I think I took my tape off too soon. I want it. I'm gonna add some depth. <laughs> This is a, uh, what is this? Manganese blue. Did you see what Barbara said? What's that? Of course, collage. I think that's what the C stands for in your name, Shell. <laughs> Could You're be. You're probably right. Could be. It could be. Well, you are queen of torn paper collage, you know. Well, I mean, I don't know if I'm the queen, but I certainly do it a lot. This little weird flower from Gina's stamps would probably work here. And then I could add some black pin work, and then I would be done. Cut this out. I didn't get the web. I think Leslie actually sent me this. Oh, of course. Cool. Tissue because we we were partners. Were you doing, doing the stamp tissue exchange? Well, no, we, um, during Gina's thing last year. Oh, okay. Okay. We were partners for that one month. And I think this is something she sent me because I don't have this stamp from Gina. But I recognize that it is from Gina. Uh huh. And there was some of that kind of design in the background here uh, from that original tissue paper that I had. So I think this will work just to just, I don't know, focus your mind here. A little focus. I need something to slow it down. Out from the center to try to keep the silly wrinkles away. Silly wrinkles? Silly wrinkles. I have silly wrinkles. You know the ones. Yeah, I know the ones. They show up no matter what you do. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, what do I need? Just sell them as texture. <laughs> That's right. They are. They are textures. I wish you like this 
this red, these wrinkles and these red pieces and stuff. Totally texture. Oh, we have lots of texture. Yeah. Texture, texture, texture everywhere. Get a little Stabilo all in there to Stabilo all it up. Like you do. Well, now you're going to make me want to go make a journal. Um, yeah, I think you should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Journal making is fun. Well, I like to paint. <laughs> I like to paint too, but I also like to make journals. <laughs> And you know, I have some journals that other people have made me that I haven't even touched. I could have used one of them for this project. Some really beautiful ones, but they're so beautiful I don't want to touch them. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, I think that's oh, that's a good idea. I, I have a lovely journal that um Ms. Vicky yes. sent to me. Yes, Vicky makes awesome journals. Yes. She's one of those me to to the journals and do the journal pages. So she's a journal maker. She, she's a maker. For yeah. sure. She makes beautiful ones. I have a tiny one that she made and then I have a bigger one. And I could have worked in them for this project. Right? I could have. Should have, would have, might have, may have. I think this needs some color. Color, color. Well, my newest well, weird thing to do is use my Posca pens for color, so I guess I'll do that. We are at the top of the hour. Oh, are we? All so right. I think, I think whatever we do, we'll just continue on. And uh, hope. Hopefully, we'll get over all of these issues that we're dealing with at home and overseas and everywhere. And uh, be safe. Wash your hands. Stay absolutely. And uh, we'll be thinking of you. Yeah, we'll see you next week, if not before. Hopefully, providing a healthy place for you to make art. Yep. And to entertain you while you're being bored. Right. So thanks for being with us and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. If this thing ever goes. Uh, it thinks about it. It takes a minute.